This is the All Powers S700 version 2, a lightweight yet still very capable budget power station. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on it, keep watching. Before we get started, I just want to thank All Powers for sending out this unit so that I could share it with you. So what we'll do is we'll go down to the tabletop. I'll go over the key features for this unit as well as its physical and performance specification and its mode of operation. And I'll also share my experiences with it. All right, just before we take a closer look at the All Powers S700 version 2, I'll share with you what came with it. A manual with warranty information and a wall charging unit. That's all. There's no extra cables, no case, nothing else. Okay, as we go through the key features and the performance specifications especially, I want you to keep in mind that this is a budget power station. It is offered at a relatively good price compared to a lot of power stations in its classification. In fact, as of right now on the link provided, it is retailing at $429 US and it's likely will be on sale when you go to take a look. In fact, there is a discount code that I can offer you that will be in the video description that will get you 15% off if you are interested. So what makes this such a powerful little power station is the fact that it starts with a 606 watt hour capacity battery inside and it yet still has a 700 watt inverter that can handle up to a 1200 watt surge. Well more about that in a few minutes time. It does allow for it pass through charging and it will charge in as little as 1.5 hours from 0 to 80% and it does that by having simultaneous charging. Now, it's not what you normally think, which is AC and solar. It's actually AC and on this side, USB Type-C fast charge. And we'll talk more about that in a few minutes time. All right, now let's go into the physical specifications. One of the things I think I like about this the most is its light weight. It only comes in at 11.68 pounds, which is 5.3 kilograms. Its size is as follows. 10.4 inches in this direction, 7 inches in this direction, and 5.4 inches in this direction, which would be 26.3 centimeters, 14 centimeters in, uh, in depth, of course, and 18 centimeters in height. All right, let's get into the performance specifications for this, this unit. All right, let's go through the performance specifications for the S700 version 2. Now, I'll ask you to keep in mind again that this is a budget power bank. So it won't have all the bells and whistles some of the more expensive ones have so you'll understand that as I go through them So to begin the battery it is a lithium-ion battery with an 800 to 1000 life cycle That's opposed to what's becoming more commonplace now and better in terms of life cycles And that's the lithium iron phosphate which are rated between 3000 and 3500 life cycles And even then it's just dropping to 80% so it's not as if that's the, the unit is dead after that, but still it's, that's the reason why they can keep the price down is because they're using what's now the older technology of lithium ion batteries. Now the advertised battery capacity is 606 watt hours, which is considerable considering the, the size and weight of this unit. I'm actually impressed how much capacity it has as I am impressed with the output. The inverter is rated at 700 watts and will peak at 1200 watt surge. Again, very good for such a small size battery. And it is a pure sine wave output. Now let's go through the inputs for this device. The input starting with AC is down here. It is a 5561 barrel bolt input and that is what is on the wall charger. And again, there's another part of why it's a battery uh, a budget unit. You get a separate wall charger. Newer units are incorporating the charging right into the device and just have a cable that goes to the wall. This not only means it's saving a little bit of money, but you're also saving size and weight on the unit itself. So if you have no need to take your charger with you, you have saved some size and weight by having it built separately from the device. Having said that, here's a really neat feature for this battery, and that is that there is dual or simultaneous charging capacity or capabilities for this unit but it's not what most other units have. This is the Anderson PowerPole input device that you can use for solar charging. 
Unfortunately, you cannot use this and the AC unit at the same time. It's a one or the other. The other input device is on the far end and it is the USB Type-C fast charge port. So that is a 100 watt outgoing power, but it's rated as a 60 watt input port. Now, my, in my testing, I watched on other devices that it would go as high as 80 on a regular um, use, so 80 watts. So it's a little bit better than advertised. And it's the use of the AC charger and the PD fast charger that result in that rapid recharge time. So I think that's pretty good at that. You can also use this unit down here or the barrel bolt, the 5561 barrel bolt to charge with a car charger if you have a car charging cigarette lighter type plug that has one of those on the other end of it. All right, let's go through the outputs for this device. So there are two AC outputs, one here and one here, and they are rated at 110 volt, 60 hertz. Uh, that's a little lower than we would expect at 120 volts, and that's the, the standard for most people. 110 may or may not have an effect on your device, whatever it is you're using, but I haven't noticed it in real time. You know, it hasn't made really any difference to anything that I've plugged in and tried it with, at least not that I can notice. I just point that out uh, to show you that. There is three on this end. They are kind of scattered around the machine, so they're not consolidated into unique areas. They're a little bit scattered, and I think what's happening is they're making maximum use of the space inside of this unit, and that's as a result the ports are in different places. If you wanted them all on the front, for instance, the unit might end up being a little bit bigger. I'm okay with that. You just learn where they are very quickly. And once again, three USB type A outputs, and as I mentioned, the USB type C fast charge output, and two more 12 volt DC outputs through 5561 barrel bolts here on this end of the device. All right, so we have gone through, oh yes, I think I also must mention this. It does have a cigarette car output as well. So 12 volt DC uh, cigarette lighter output here as well. All right, let's go into the operation of this device. All right, just before we go through the operation of this unit, there's a couple features that I have not shown you yet. One is the fact that there are two LED lamps on the unit on the front, one on either side. They operate independently by these small orange buttons. I won't turn them on to blind you with them right now, but they're nice to have if you are out camping, just a, a nice extra feature. And the other feature I'll show you as I turn the unit on, and that is that there is a Bluetooth app available from All Powers that you can pair with this unit for some hands-free operation. Uh, it's downloadable in both Apple and Android. It does give you access to the features that are on this. And yeah, it's a pretty good app. It's one of those things that's nice to have, but you don't need it to operate this. And um, okay, so let's just start by turning the unit on. So there is no one main over overall power button. The AC and the DC are turned on independently. The DC is the button right here and it's just a quick tap and you can see the button lights up green and now the display has lit up as well and down on the bottom is where it's showing DC showing right down here on the corner and to it light up the AC it's a little different for some reason whereas the DC was a quick tap the AC is a press and hold and just wait. It's about at least full two seconds. It came on. Now you may be able to hear that the fan came on at the same time. It does that on startup. About 20 seconds the fan will cut out, but you will see a little symbol of the fan turning. So AC and DC are showing here. Now the display is very basic, very simple, but it does have everything you need to see. So right in the center is a an icon showing power increments of 20% each. And right now we're re and right at the bottom, numerically very, very small. Let's see if I can bring in a little closer to see that. Is the percentage is right now it's showing 71 percent so i have 71 percent of the total charge and the amount of time that expected that i have on this to uh for the battery to last now here's something to note 
when you turn on the AC especially, but it does with DC, but more with the AC, there is what's known as parasitic drain. In other words, the inverter is actually using a little bit of the battery's energy just to stay ready, if you will. So if you did plug nothing in and turned nothing else on, this battery would start to drain by the very fact that the AC inverter is turned on. Now that's true of all batteries, more some more than others. This one isn't bad, but it does, it's just a, a caution that I put out there that if you're not plugging something into this and charging it, turn the AC off. Turn them both off for that matter if you don't have anything plugged in. All right, let's do exactly that. Let's plug these units in with some power and uh, we'll show you how the, the display changes. So we'll be plugging in the AC power on this side. Now it's going to take a minute because what happens is the battery has to recognize the power that's coming in and then the wattage will start to climb. You can see that the uh, visual display, the icon is already showing the fact that it is charging and now our wattage is climbing. It's showing right around 52, but it'll go to about 110 watts input. I'm going to let that climb for a second because I have a second input. I want to show both of them operating at the same time. So we're in the 90s. And we just breached 100 watts in. So it's running about 105 watts in. It seems to be leveling off. I usually get about 18, 110. See where it levels off here. It seems to be leveling off at about 108 watts in. Okay, so the other one I want to plug in is the USB Type-C fast charge, and I'll plug that in on the opposite side. So now we'll see the input wattage begin to climb again. Remember, it's right here. You should be seeing that number right here. Right now we're at 158. Climbing again, 166, 173. And I'll show about 185, 183. All right, it seems to be leveling off at about 180, 182 watts in. So that's the combined input of the USB Type-C fast charge with about 80 watts going in and the AC current putting the into the side running at about 100 watts. So those two combined is what allows this battery to recharge so quickly. Okay, so there's not a lot more, actually there's nothing else to show you about the operation of this battery. I think it's time to share my experiences with it. All right, I think we can wrap this video up with me just show, sharing some of my experiences and using and testing this battery and where I see it best suited to. So I've had it for about a month or so now and I've been playing with it around the house and looking at all all the different things that I could charge with you and it sits in a kind of a unique place for such a small battery and such a light weight it still has more power than a lot of the batteries in this size weight class with 606 watt hours of storage capacity and 700 watts on the inverter that's pretty good in fact it's really good for camping is it good for home use though? Well, yes it is, but don't count on it for major power failures to power all the units in your home. And that's what you have to decide, of course, is what do I really want to have operating in a power failure? And then look at that device, determine how much power it consumes, and then size your battery to it. So with a 700 watt inverter, this isn't gonna power a whole lot of devices around your home. It will power your refrigerator, or at least it powers my refrigerator refrigerator, which is one of the more important ones in reality to keep you from losing food and your freezer as well. So it's pretty good for that, but it only has the 600 watt hours of stored energy. So it's not going to last all that long. So you better have a way of recharging this in a hurry, such as a solar panel. So that's the way to look at this. But for camping, this will charge all of your devices around the, around the campsite for sure. All of your tablets, your cell phones, you can light up your campsite. You, and most importantly, and what we would use something like this for car camping, is running a, a 12 volt refrigerator on this. So that's probably one of the best uses for it. I think it pairs well with a 12 volt refrigerator when you're out camping but it can run any number of other devices you like to take with you. It's not a backpacking unit, no mistake there. It is a car camping unit. So it will, it's really well suited to that. You can do something with it, some things with it at home. You can run a number of tools, but not everything. And yeah, so it's just a matter of sizing the battery, 
to the need you have or the, the tools and the appliances that you want to power. Okay, so it's worked out really well for me. It is still a budget device, so it doesn't have all the bells and whistles. I think I mentioned it doesn't have a 15 watt uh, wireless charger on top for my cell phone. That's quite okay. I got plenty, plenty cables that I can charge it with. I don't need a wireless charger on top. Those are just nice extras. Uh, but it is nice that I can recharge this very, very quickly because with the, only having that 606 watt hours, I do want to recharge it quickly as I can. And being able to put 100 watt of, well, it won't put in 100 watts, but being, yes, that is the rated input of a solar panel. If I have at least a solar panel put out at least 100 watts, then I should be able to run this or charge this up pretty quickly. And if I happen to have power, I can charge it up even faster using the AC charger and the PD charger as well, just in case I am somewhere that I can get it charged up very quickly, maybe a neighbor's or somebody else in the family. Okay, that's really all I have to offer. Very basic machine, does provide all the needs within its classification. It is lighter and more powerful than most within its weight class. It's quite a good machine. And again, what I'll do is I'll put the links to where you can purchase this, plus that 15% off discount code and all the specifications and performance specifications in the video description. But I would invite you to, if you have any comments or questions on this unit, please put those in the comments section. Until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.